This short tutorial explains the step-by-step -step process used to construct Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle can be used in many contexts, one of which is the process of determining the leading coefficients for terms when expanding a binomial. In genetics, a binomial oftentimes needs to be expanded during the solving of a word problem dealing with either A, genetic counseling specifically, or B, some other general calculation of probabilistic outcomes for offspring. There's two main steps. One, create a single row consisting of the integer one. Two, repeat the following steps as many times as needed. Step two is broken down into three sub-steps. A, create a new row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. B, <laughs> the first integer and the last integer in the new row are both one. C, Fill in any remaining integers in the new row by summing the two integers in the row above it that lie just to its left and right. Now we'll see that algorithm in use. Step 1. Create a new single row consisting of the integer 1. Okay, well we're done with the first row. That was simple enough. Now we go on to repeating uh, A, B, and C as many times as needed. 2A. Create a new row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. There's one integer in the first row, so for the second row we'll have one more than that. That's two. The first integer and the last integer in the new row are both one. Okay, so we assign one to both of those. Fill in any remaining integers in the new row by summing the two integers in the row above it that lie just to its left and right. Okay, for the second row there are only two integers and both are known. They're both one the first and last, both one. So nothing needs to be done for step two. And we're done with the second row of Pascal's triangle. Okay, so we uh, repeat step two A again if we're going to create another row. Create a new row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. The row above it has two numbers, two integers, so this row will have three integers. The first integer and the last integer in the new row are both one. So we assign one of those now we have one unknown in the middle. Fill in any remaining integers in the new row by summing the two integers in the row above it that lie just to its left and right. So we have that question mark there. We need to figure it out. What goes there? Well, we're going to sum the two numbers just above in the row above it just to its left and right. 1 plus 1, which equals 2. So 2 goes in that slot in Pascal's triangle. So we're done with the third row. We're going to do a fourth row, so we go back to 2A again. Create a new row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. We had three integers in the row above it, so we have four integers in this row. The first integer and the last integer in the new row are both one. Fill in any remaining integers in the new row by summing the two integers in the row above it that lie just to its left and right. So we have that red question mark. What goes in that slot? Well, we're going to sum the two numbers in the row above it just to its left and right. So 1 plus 1 equals, well, 3. So that slot is filled, that question mark. Now we have another question mark. What integer goes there? Same thing. We're going to add the two numbers in the row just above it just to its left and its right. 2 plus 1 equals 3. So now we're done with the fourth row. We're going to add a fifth row. So again, create a new row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. We had four in the row above it, so we have five integers in this row. 2b, the first integer and the last integer in the new row are both one. Easy enough. Fill in any remaining integers in the new row by summing the two integers in the row above it that lie just to its left and right. So we have that red question mark right there. What number goes in there? The number's right above it, in the row right above it to the left and right. One plus three equals four. We move over, we've got another unknown. 3 plus 3, the row above it, numbers just to the left and right, 3 plus 3 equals 6. We've got another unknown. So we're going to sum the two numbers in the row just above it, just to its left and right. 3 plus 1 equals 4. Now we're done with the fifth row. We're going to create a sixth row. Create a new row, row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. We had 5 in the row above it, so we'll have 6 integers in this row. The first and last, last integers are both 1. Okay, I'm not going to go out through all the steps, but okay, we had a question mark there where 5 is. Well, 1 plus 4 equals 5. Now we have the next question mark. We're just going to add the 2 above it. 4 plus 6 equals 10. 
Next question mark, 6 plus 4 equals 10. Next question mark, 4 plus 1 equals 5. And we're done with the sixth row. We're going to add another row. Create a new row of integers. The number of integers in the new row will be one more than the number of integers in the row above it. The last row had six, so this row will have seven integers. The first and last are one. Now we have that first question mark. Well, one plus five equals six. Move over a question mark, five plus 10 equals 15. Move over a question mark, 10 plus 10 equals 20. Move over a question mark, 10 plus five equals 15. Move over a question mark, five plus one equals six. And we're done with the seventh row. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the details, but if you created an eighth row, it would, that would be it. If you created a ninth row, that would be it, and that would be the tenth row. And you can try the eighth, ninth, and tenth row for yourself and see if you come up with the same results that I obtained here. And that's it for constructing Pascal's Triangle.